What is going on guys, my name is Lucas Erickson and today we're going to talk about making your own LUTs inside DaVinci Resolve 15. Let's go. Being able to create your own LUTs is an awesome way of finding your own style in filmmaking. This is why today I want to talk about how you can make your very very own LUTs in DaVinci Resolve. So lots of you guys requested this tutorial when I was asking what you guys wanted to see in future videos so I thought I might sit down and actually really go through this and how you can make your own LUTs. So DaVinci Resolve is actually a pretty old software which has been used by the industry for a couple of years now. However, they really started to break through and add some really great features into their software. DaVinci Resolve is starting to rival software such as Premiere, Final Cut and uh, Sony Vegas, who uses that? <laughs> but yeah, so DaVinci Resolve have two versions of their software. One is completely free and the other version is a pro version. Now don't worry, the free version is not a trial version or anything. It's completely functional, you can edit a full movie on it, it's completely fine to use. It's just with the pro version you're going to get a couple more features on top of the base software. But yeah, the software is completely available for Windows and Mac, so you guys will be able to download it no matter what. So check out the description box down below and you will see DaVinci Resolve is right there linked to you. And you're just going to download that and we're ready to continue to the next step. So Resolve will take around 5-10 to 10 minutes to download, depending on where you are in the world. Like, I live in Australia and, and our internet speeds are just perfect. So now that everything's downloaded, you guys are going to want to go to Resolve and open it up. Now you might have to go through an installation process at first, don't worry. It's all secure, it's a safe software to use, Don't. there's no viruses on it or anything. Just install it and we're ready to proceed to the next step. So now open it up and make sure everything is looking good. And if it is, I'm going to hop into Resolve right now and talk you guys through the whole process of making your own LUTs. So let's head right into it, let's go. Okay, so now that we're here in Resolve, we're going to go ahead and create this new project by pressing New Project. And let's call it Making Your Own LUTs, like that. Okay, so now that we're here in DaVinci Resolve, we're going to go ahead and import our clips. So, mine is over here in my DSIM, uh, this one, and then let's just take this one as an example. And we've pretty much done the importing stage. Now we're going to go into this next little spot right here, which is with that little line through the clip. And we're going to go to the media pool up here and drag that in the timeline like that. And once we've done this, we can move on to the next tab down here. And actually, we're going to go to the color tab, which is this circle with all the colors in it. So this is pretty much the workspace that you're going to be working in to create your LUTs. So DaVinci Resolve uses a node-based system, so pretty much you've just got to know that. So this is the starting clip, and everything that you add on top, this will be the end point. So it's, it's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Before we actually start making our LUT, let's just correct our camera before we do anything else. So the first thing we're going to do now is actually create a correction for our footage. Um, so this is quite important, just if you're shooting a log format, or even if you're, just, if you're not like me right here, um, just to correct some of the colors within the image. And so we, just so we can see what's going on, we're going to pull up the scopes here, and as we can see, here's the parade scopes. Now, just to quickly go over this, this zero here are the shadows, and the top of it, about a thousand up here, is the highlights of the image. As you can see, so none of the shadows are actually going down below, Zero, which is good, that's that's what we want. We want to have it just about there, actually, so this is quite a good calibration I've got here. So as you can see from the graph here, they're all peaking up here. Just bring down this curve down here, and as you're about to see, these points are actually all going down. This does two things also. It also decreases the exposure within the image, so the highlights are going down. Now, as you can see, these kind of lines, the straight lines, th this means that this information has peaked, and you will not be able to get any of this information back no matter what correction you do to it. So these are the, this, this highlight back here, this is what is causing that line there. But all the rest of the image is fine, so we're just going to continue grading it now. So next thing we're going to do, I see there's quite a lot of blue tones within the image. So we're going to pull up this little dot here, and we're going to go to the gamma, which is your mid-tones. Just very slightly bring in some of the red tones within the image, and just to warm it up a bit. As you can see here, it's kind of fixed that up, and I think that looks a lot better already. Uh, as you can see, the image is pretty good from what it is. I think we don't have to change too much. You can go ahead and just change all this stuff as well if you feel like it. Um, I don't think it's necessary, just depending on what image you've got here. Okay, so now we've kind of corrected this image here. I think that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and create another node. So we're going to do that by going up over here, pressing Add Node, and pressing Add Serial. Let's just create a second node where we're going to apply all of our effects to. So let's do that. And I think the good point for starting is always creating a little bit of an S-curve within our image. So we're going to do that by placing a point in the middle here. Then placing another point just around here. 
and also create a single point right here and that will just give us the, the starting point for an S curve. Now we're going to take the blacks just a bit so they're a bit crushed and we're also going to break down the highlights just a bit as well like so just very slight and we're going to bring this one down here just a bit right now it's all just about finding the right spot for each of these like um, nodes right here if you want to just adjust this curve you can as well um, but as I said we're going to fix all this up in future so don't worry about it too much right now we're just going to fix that and that looks pretty good I think right there so the next thing we're going to do, we, as you can see, we've got all these dots right here, and they're just going to allow us to actually select individual colors within the image. Now, one of the first things that's kind of hitting me right now is that it's quite a saturated image. Now, we can take down saturation by just using this bar here and just dragging it down just a little bit. We don't want to have it too much because we don't want to have it completely sat desaturated, but that looks all right. I think we just bring that just down a bit. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do now is actually adjust the hue of each of the colors. So I think we can just start off with these green tones in the back over here. Um, they're probably quite easy to work with, so let's just select them right here, and that's going to bring us right there. So I might just going to I might just bring it up just a tinsy bit, not too much, just to give it a bit more warmth, like that. We're also going to then select some of the blue tones down here, maybe, and we're going to bring that hue up as well, just a little bit. Not if you can see up here, you can actually just change the the color of everything in my room, but um, yeah, I'm just gonna bring that up a bit to give that a bit more of a teal look um, right there. Cool, and then we're also gonna go ahead and select the skin tones because they're quite important for us to work with. Uh, let's just very slightly because this is gonna be quite noticeable. See, as you can see, but if we if we not have if, if we don't have this adjustment, my my face looks quite red. So if we just bring up the warmth just a teensy little bit. It's going to kind of correct that and it looks a lot better already. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much that adjustment done. Let's keep moving on to the next step. This so next step is hue versus saturation. So again, we're going to kind of target the same colors that we did last time. Let's select the skin tones first right here, like that, and let's just bring down. And as you can see, that, that, that's just affecting those uh, skin tones in my face there. So we can just target them like that. So, and I'm just going to bring that down just a bit because they were a bit saturated. Um, so that's that. I'm going to go back and select this color here as well. And we're gonna bring that down, and that will just desaturate some of those green tones. We don't want to make it too harsh, just because it's going to affect some of the other green tones as well. That, that's looking so, yeah, but that's looking pretty nice. We're actually gonna also select the blue here and just desaturate that just a bit as well. So yeah, we're going for quite a desaturated look with this image. I think that will look pretty good with this moody kind of uh, tones over here. And let's keep moving on to our next step, which is hue versus luminance. So luminance is pretty much how bright the color is on the screen. So again, we're going to select the same three colors, so your skin tones. If we adjust that luminance, it's going to kind of brighten up those colors. I think I might actually bring down the luminance of some of those skin tones, because they're a bit bright. And yeah, so luminance is something you don't really need to do too much, just because it's quite dependent on your exposing conditions wherever you're shooting. Like that, that's pretty good. And we're also going to change the luminance of the blue tones down there. Alright, cool, so that's that step done, and let's move on to the next bit. So this is luminance versus saturation. I would recommend for this is just like having a look at what works and what looks the best. I would just kind of drag this up, drag it down just a bit, have a look what, what looks good. Um, I'm just going to go for something just around like there maybe. That's pretty much all the adjustments we can do in here in the curves adjustments. So let's move on to the color wheels right here. So as you can see, I'm trying to accentuate some of these blue tones with the image, and most of them are mid-tones, so we're going to go ahead and just go on the on the gamma. So what we're going to do is we're just going to bring that down just a bit, right here. And as you can see, the, the slider we do it, the better it looks really, and as we can see, this just made a massive difference. If we take that off for a second, that's actually brought so much more blue tones with the image. I really dig that. I really like that for this kind of setting. And we can also play around with these other settings here. So this is going to, the gain is going to change our highlights with the image. So I wouldn't really change that too much, just because most of them are actually skin tones. But now it's just really about finding the look that you want to get from your LUT. Now you might not think those corrections have done a lot to the image, but let's just take this off for a second and let's have a look what it looks like before. That this LUT I've made here actually does to the image. Okay, so now that we've finished the grading, we're actually going to go here and we're going to make sure we've got clips down here selected. This will bring up this little uh, window down here. And we're just going to look for generate 3 dlutcube and it should be right there. As we can see, it's right there and we're going to click on it. We're going to find where we want to put it. I'm going to call it cool tones just because it's quite cool <laughs> and um, 
I don't know if this is actually saving it to, but it's gonna save it to LUT, whatever that is, I'm not sure. We can save it wherever we want, I'm just gonna click save right here. And that should be it, that's pretty much our LUT has been exported now. Now if we go back into Premiere, we can actually go and apply this LUT to our actual project. Okay, so now that we're here in Premiere, let's actually preview this LUT and see what it would look like on top of our footage. We're gonna go into Custom, and we're gonna go into our desktop, or wherever you saved it. I saved it on my desktop, if I can find it, it's right there. And as you can see, that's just going to apply that light to it, and it looks great. So yeah, that, that's pretty much this whole tutorial. And again, if you want to correct some of this stuff, you can correct it here, but you're going to have a bit of a loss of quality. But I think that looks really good, and that's pretty much it. So yeah, I'll pass it back to Lucas, and he's going to do the outro for you. So yeah, I'll see you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you guys so much for watching that video. If you really did enjoy it, smash the like button and subscribe for more weekly filmmaking content. But yeah, I'll see you guys next week, and... Yeah, goodbye.